On today's episode, of course, we break down the Thursday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Minnesota Vikings. And besides that, it is mailbag time. These are your questions, and we answer them. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave a comment, and enjoy. Learning a new language can feel intimidating. When I first decided to give Spanish a shot, I was worried about it being difficult, mainly the time commitment, having to hear how my accent sounds. But thanks to Babbel, the number one selling language learning app, the whole process, it's fun, it's fast, it's easy. My favorite part is the 15-minute lessons. It makes it a perfect way to learn on the go. Other language learning apps, they use AI for their lesson plans. Not Babbel. They were created by 100 language experts. Their teaching method is scientifically proven to be effective. You could choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German, and they're going to help you with your pronunciation, your accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel, and it has a 20-day money-back guarantee. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com, code FOOTBALLERS, Babble, it's language for life. Hi, this is Troy Polamalu, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. I liked that one. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, December 8th. Andy, Mike, and Gimli here with you. On so the that, show. That, that happens in Lord of the Rings, right? Yes, that's okay. why I, I threw, that's why I threw All the right. Gimli in there. I was, I was, I was, everyone likes a good Gimli joke. <laughs> Or a Gimli impression. That's timely. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the kids are really with that one. Man, I still remember when those movies came out. Yeah, we were very young. We were. <laughs> you don't want to say things like that. Really? They're yeah. that old? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When are we getting to the point where, like, when will they redo them? Because, you know, that's there's a that's a, a good question a timeline like eventually somebody's gonna do all the harry potters and everyone that's the one i always someone about. will do all the the lord of the rings again yes yeah. they will when when harry potter gets remade <laughs> and i've lived through two generations of oh, harry potter that's, that's when i'll feel super old it's funny because the the lord of the rings movies were like the groundbreaking visual effects yes and then they will be redone because their groundbreaking visual effects are not good what, they already are uh, questionable. They have <laughs> hashtag bad. <laughs> they haven't aged very well. That's they it's were, incredible. Twenty years ago was the first one. Wow, we're old. I mean, <laughs> well, Jason's old. Yeah, as you say, Gimli over there. <laughs> we have a great show for you today. Quick question: We're we're back at it. We have a buy or sell news and notes. We got the mailbag. We got Thursday night preview, and. It's going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. Join the foot.com for our community of amazing human beings that all play fantasy football together. And, and join the foot.com for all of the, the tools. If you're using any of our, um, you know, this is the playoff push, the stretch. If you want the stream finder to get those right matchups or, um, you know, the strength of schedule tool. I use those all the time in the leagues that, you know, matter. Uh, that will be jointhefoot.com as well. And tomorrow on the episode, we'll break down the matchups for week 14, including starts of the week. And one of the things I lean on for starts of the week is the stream finder tool where you can sort out, uh, at this point in time, if you've noticed on the breakdowns for each game, we are giving you last six weeks data, not just season long because defenses do, adjust they mm -hmm. change they get personnel back they improve they or sometimes get worse <laughs> like wa like washington the washington football team they lose chase young and all of a sudden become so weird a, a good defense again that how did how I did that it, happen i think it was starting to happen the last couple of weeks they had chase and then 
continue. It's just funny. You expect them to be bad and then get worse, and then they're like, nah, we got we got this. Yeah, yeah. So lots going on. We are also live on Spotify Green Room. Oh, yeah. This afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Do not miss it. It's simple. Download the Green Room app. It's free. Follow Fantasy Footballers on there, and you'll be notified when we are live. It is always a fun time. Uh, we are interacting with listeners uh, throughout the show, whether it's in the chat or bringing them up on stage to ask questions. It's been a lot of fun this year. We've gotten into some topics that, you know, maybe we don't normally cover on this show. So it's been. Yeah, you can deep dive certain things. And it's just like if you thought that this show was loose, then I mean, that, like the. The that green room. The green room is is the equivalent of we've taken our ties off from this show, right? Mm -hmm. So it is. This show's loose. <laughs> that show's loose. It just <laughs> gets nuts over there. That's right. Buy or sell time. Buy or sell. Presented by Pristine Auction. Not surprisingly, last week I went two for three. And uh, led, led the done. way in buyers. It's so my favorite part of being the host and introducing things. Is I can just throw in a quick comment and move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's do buy yourself for week 14. Russell Wilson. Is he a top 10 quarterback at Houston? His best finish since returning was the quarterback nine at Washington in week 12. I will buy. Yeah, I, I thought okay. I thought we saw some progress. I really did last week. I like the receivers in this game. I like Russ in this game, so I'll buy it. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, man, this line is so funny to me. I, I do agree with you, Andy. We saw a little bit of progress last week, but we still saw, I, I think, a few passes that just completely got away from him. Something isn't right. Now, Houston is a nice salve. Uh, to get right, I love this line. I think this is the most difficult one that I've seen like this whole season because it's a great quarterback against a terrible team, but the quarterback's been struggling, and I've said this, and I'll continue to. I'm going to sell Russell Wilson until after I see it. If I get it wrong, that's fine, but I ha he has not proven it all the way to me yet, so I am going to sell, say he is not top 10. Yeah, I, I will be selling as well. I he's currently not ranked in my top 10. I can't imagine come the weekend that he will be there. And there's a couple guys behind him that will not shock me if they exploit their matchup and they jump up and surpass him. So I'll, I'll sell the top 10. Hollywood Brown, 65 receiving yards against Cleveland. He has not hit that mark since week nine. He averaged 85 yards a game from weeks one through nine weeks, 10 through 13, or as we'll call them the, Walk through the valley of the shadow yes. of points. I mean, Baltimore's offense is struggling. He seem, Lamar seems to be maybe hyper-targeting Mark Andrews even more. Uh, 65, It's any Hollywood prediction stinks because it's one play. Sure. But I'll sell it. Cleveland's Ooh. at home in this game. I have Cleveland winning the ball game, so I will sell Hollywood. Yeah, it's a it's a tough line, um, but I love the man, and so the button must be pressed oh. for Hollywood because I am buying this. The talent is there, and someday, <laughs> um, Lamar is going to get it together, and the <laughs> Ravens will score points. That will happen, right? At some point. Well, you say it with such conviction; it's certain to. Yeah, uh, Mike. He's, he's been so close the past two weeks. Fifty-one yards, uh, fifty-five Man, yards, and that was with bad Lamar. So if Lamar is just not bad, like, like what has happened to Lamar Jackson? The man has the man has lost himself. It feels like out there on the football field and making just very bizarre dis at least three to four decisions during the game where you go. What are you doing, man? This is not uh, unsurprising to me. Okay. For multiple reasons. One, the defense is not what it was. It has no secondary. They're giving up points. It's putting more on Lamar's plate. You feel plate. like he's pressing? He's pressing. Uh, they, they've gotten behind in games. I'm not, I'm not trying to take anything away from Lamar, the player, but this is not a player that has historically won ball games with his arm. He's not a 300-yard passer. 
And so when you press them into that situation, you take away, at a minimum, you've taken away explosive run plays from players other than him. Right, you don't have you don't have J.K. Dobbins, who we forget how good he was, and and Gus Edwards. You have Devonta Freeman, who is passable, and so I think you you the Seahawks would love to have Devonta Freeman. You you had Lamar come out and do some things with his arm. Then you had defenses in the NFL adjust, mm -hmm. and now you're you need him to adjust again. November seventh was the last time that the Ravens scored twenty points. That is over a month ago, and if you remember. Um, that that following game after you know they they uh, beat Minnesota, that's when Miami did that crazy package where they just corner blitzed him right. non-stop, and that's what t like t sometimes you go oh did did the NFL see something are they picking right. up on it you can just look it's statistically like the they are teams are doing that Pittsburgh this last week blitzed so much more than they usually do and I think. You're right. Lamar has to figure that out. So far, he has not. But I'll, I'll buy the the yardage for Hollywood. Saquon Barkley, 80 total yards against the Chargers. Hasn't hit that mark since returning. I'm buying this. I think he will hit it. I like him this week. 80 total yards? Correct. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's going to be... We got a... He's going to have to do it from... From Yulon or what? Yeah, Jake, Jake Fromm likely... You know him or or Glennon is going to have to get it done. Ah, uh, man, the Chargers, the run funnel. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, Saquon Barkley, you got to be able to do something against the run funnel. But I will. Oh, I'm gonna. Your heart sell. says sell. My heart. I mean, I'm gonna go with my heart. My heart yeah. says sell, and it makes me sad. I'm gonna go for a monster forty and forty game here. I believe you'll get forty <laughs> on the ground, forty through the air, and so I will buy. So you and I bought it. Yes. Mike sold it. Correct. That is correct. Oh, Saquon. Like, how? I'm sorry. Your time has expired. Oh, I'm not talking about I'm me. Sorry, I'm sorry. Your time. Has no. <laughs> go, go on. Go on. <laughs> Just go on. like the disappointment of the Saquon Barkley season in totality. I mean, like, look, the the dude missed a month or essentially five games because it happened right at the beginning with a really fluky. He's just backing up and happens to step on someone and rolls his ankle. And it turns into a hot air balloon, and so he misses a bunch of time. And then he comes back to just a, <laughs> a completely dysfunctional offense with that fires their offensive coordinator. He's playing with a backup quarterback now. It's just it's Saquon. Do you do you feel like Saquon is a full on bust? for what the expectation was off of the return from the ACL where he was going in the first round. Yes, I do think that he is currently a bust. However, I still am of the mindset that the next month, I think three out of the next four games, he's going to catch the fire that people drafted or, or preferably uh, traded. Catching uh, fire him. is very difficult. And there is a it. fire out there he needs to catch. Uh, yes, he needs to capture the it. fire. Capture the fire and uh, – and then use it to have a lot of fantasy points. But the reality is uh, the Chargers, uh, Philadelphia, Chicago, three of the f next four weeks, I, I think he will explode and help people win championships. Yeah, I agree. He, he's a bust relative to what you – like this year when you drafted Saquon, you were doing it with the mindset that maybe I'm stealing value in the first round. It wasn't a guarantee. You were taking the shot at – bargain shopping for Saquon in our listener league I think I was pick eight or nine somewhere yes. around there and Barkley quote fell to me and I had not taken him anywhere and I was like oh yeah I have no shares he's fallen to me maybe I'll take maybe I'll take that chance of he's gonna be Saquon Barkley and so I drafted him and but then immediately knew, <laughs> but you knew when you took him it was gonna take a couple weeks and it did and then weeks three and four he was a top 10 running back yeah and, and then, then got that, hurt yep well, hopefully he gets back to it. All right. Uh, that was by yourself from our friends at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS, BALLERS. and you'll get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right. We have a report today. Jeff Duncan reporting that Alvin Kamara is expected to return to practice and play in Week 14 against the JETS. 
Jets, Jets, Jets. He practiced in a limited basis last week, but it was a Thursday night football game. So I, I think that has been the timeline that's been expected. Also, Taysom Hill will start in week 14 against the Jets. Sean Payton saying this will be the next opportunity for Taysom Hill. <laughs> I don't know what that means. This sounds like a – It's a good quote. A movie quote. Uh, Corey Davis placed on IR. I think we already mentioned yeah, we that. Did. Double report. Well, we, we knew he was no, we, hurt. We knew he was on IR. Did we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Logan Thomas on IR, ruling him out for the rest of the season. David Njoku also placed on the reserve COVID list. His availability is in question for the Ravens game. Austin Hooper becomes interesting because, sure. it, it, you know, the matchup. I'm just saying the matchup against Baltimore has been so good for tight ends. And I looked at that like when I was making a DFS lineup and it's just like Hooper and Njoku, you just don't know who it's going to be with with Njoku being out in a little bit of consolidation of targets. He is at least interesting as a DFS can, can, dart throw to me. Can I counter that argument? Sure. 90% of snaps against this same team last time he played and he had no catches. Did Njoku play? Okay. Uh, Njoku is not a, a target demand in this offense. I'm just saying no, now he's... No one is. Now, I, I'm saying you should have reason to to worry about streaming Austin Hooper considering he just goosed against this exact team. Quick question. Was was Njoku a top 10 tight end against that team the last game? He because yes, he was. If you give me top 10 tight ends to to amplify your arguments, he got a you better down. talk about he got a Jimmy touchdown. Graham won one and one inside the top 10. Yeah. All right. Uh, David, uh, D David Cook. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dalvin Cook returned to a limited practice on Tuesday. I did holler and shout about this through the office. I may or may not have lots of shares of Dalvin Cook. He's going to remain out until week 15, but it's still promising to me that there are, there's talk of Dalvin Cook at all. Yeah. I mean, the, the on average fantasy playoffs are weeks 15, 16, 17 on average Dalvin Cook managers are playoff bound and they have been devastated by missing their champion and now you're going to go into the playoffs hopeful that you have him back that's great news all right that was today's news and notes brought to you by sleeper the leader in breaking news alerts make sure you grab the app and you can uh get those alerts right in your pocket what a majestic thing that is Ooh, unless it's your player being hurt yeah then it's not great uh how you doing today, Brooks? Doing good. How about you, Andy? Oh, Superman I'm does doing good. good. Al, how are you doing? <laughs> doing great. Okay, so I had to one up. Superman you're the better producer great. today. Superman. Nah, whatever. Um, any other news that I I've forgotten about? Anything else breaking? Nothing yet. Hear anything about Corey Davis? <laughs> mm. I hear he's out for the season. Uh, out on IR. Is that yeah? Because he's on the IR. That's why. Uh, we have mailbag momentarily. We do want to thank today's sponsors. We want to thank Fight Camp. Are you ready to start fighting for your fitness goals? I mean, this is, let's be honest. This is the time of year yep. when you roll over to that New Year's resolution thing. And I mm. people yeah. can say whatever you want about it. You, you want to do it. You want to not do it. It's a nice benchmark to do something new. Can I yeah. share a little story about last night? Is it fight camp related? It is fight camp. That makes sense then. Dude, I did the one-two drill okay. last night. How'd it go? Forever. And let me just tell you, the workout is intense and excellent when i was done i had to like hold my arms like above <laughs> my shoulders were just on fire and it was so great so you you went from fight camp to sweat camp well yeah i mean i i'm usually in sweat camp but yeah it was it was, a, it was absolutely phenomenal workout thousands of classes quick workouts you've got paths uh if you have no boxing experience it doesn't matter they got your back um, they provide real-time data. They have uh, full body workouts. They got brain fitness because when you box, there's a brain element to it, a focus element to it. You got family workouts. You've got uh, a lot to offer from Fight Camp, and now is the best time to get your Fight Camp. Take advantage of the holiday deal going on right now. If you purchase this December, you will get an additional pair of gloves for free. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get an additional pair of gloves for free during December. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. It's the holiday season. Uh, maybe you don't know what to get as a gift or a stocking stuffer. Well, Manscaped, think about it. They have the tools to guarantee you win this year's stocking stuffer 
or the White Elephant Competition because they have everything you need for your personal grooming. They have the best body hair trimmer on the market. That's a great white elephant gift. It's been yeah. Look, it's the the lawnmower body trimmer. I have I've had several generations. Where, I mean, we're on, uh, we're we're getting up there, and because they just keep making it better, and it is the best body hair trimmer on the market. And on top of that, Manscape is up in the game because they have a bunch of other new products: a two in one shampoo and conditioner, uh, uh, cologne infused body wash. They have nail trimmers. They got you want to take care of the the hair in your nose and your ear hair no one wants that stuff around there well they got a weed whacker hair trimmer man so check it out uh have loved and used manscaped for years and you can get 20 percent off right now check this out get 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code footballers 20 that is code footballers 20 at manscaped.com if you want that 20 percent off and free shipping look they're not going to like it but they're a team now and i don't feel guilty doing it uh they're both doing good to great and so i think i'm going to ask both producers to share in the mailbag drop and i think oh, i pay merry, them enough to do so merry christmas mailbag mailbag <laughs> it was loud that's great I Thank you guys. you guys. I feel like we got some harmony in there. That wasn't bad. Uh, what is? It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Like, what is the uh, the opposite of harmony? Talk singing? <laughs> no, no. I'm saying like destruction, pain, disharmony. Is disharmony? Dis disharmony does seem well, pretty. It's the bill. <laughs> I've thrown prefixes onto words before. And what dissonance? Dissonance. According to Google, dissonance. it's dissonance. dissonance. Okay, yes. There was a there was some real semitone stuff going on there. On the scale of what happened to what could have happened, I think they did all right. Oh, that was their best. That I mean, <laughs> yeah. That I mean, the, you guys nailed it for for you. Um, it's really great. If we're great gra work. grading on a curve here, <laughs> yes, A plus. Uh, Thank you. Well done. That means a lot. Yeah. I always feel I feel guilty putting one of them on an island, but together I'll do anything. <laughs> I'll do I, anything at all. I just I mean my my job security just went up. Well, you were wrapping up that fine ad ad yeah. read there, and I didn't want to stress you out. Oh, I appreciate that. It's a great show moment. Yeah. All right. Uh, you can head to the website if you have a mailbag question. It's easy. Click the submit a question button on the site, or you can dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. Let's jump in to the mailbag. All right. We, uh, Ooh, we've got a serious. question here from Eric because I didn't ask it at the top of the show. Oh, is this the quick this question? This is the quick question. It's still quick. It's just later. It's what? the late question. Look, there's no rules. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> is it worth hanging on to insurance running backs during a playoff run or do you drop them for bench depth? I would say that this is the time of year you need to have your insurance uh, backs ready to go. You're playoff bound. Your team is getting set. Depth matters less and less the fewer weeks that are to go. It's not to say destroy your depth and it doesn't matter at all, but this is where I will carry insurance backs, multiple defenses, playing the weeks out in advance. Um, do you guys agree, disagree, have a different strategy? I 100% agree because it's not just – what they could do for your team where like if you held on to you know well Pollard and Madison are, are a little bit different but you know just backups where at this point of the season all signs point to they would get a huge workload increase if the starter is to miss time not only does that give you a new option at your running back two or your flex position but if that player is on someone else's team at this point of the season and they get boosted with a with another player that they can have a, a stronger starting lineup against you. That's devastating. So that's just there's multiple reasons to hold on to these guys because look, you don't need you don't need that fifth wide receiver. You don't need even that fourth wide receiver who's just like someone that you could replace on the waiver wire on a weekly basis. Those players, if there's no actual path for a player on your bench to improve like an insurance running back, then there's really no need for them to be there. Yeah, and I'll just add, I mean, this would be like Jarrett Patterson for Washington if you're the Antonio Gibson manager. Right. You need to know at running back that you have somebody to play. And earlier in the year, you might have chosen to bench Chuba Hubbard instead of Jarrett Patterson because 
what if. But at this point in the year, you need to know that if your guy goes out, you're not fighting for Adrian Peterson on the waiver wire. That's right. one of the most important things in your life. Oh, So we agree. Uh, Twitter, Nathan, writing in, says, serious question. Oh, no. Oh, no. Taysom Hill. Oh, no. Or Lamar Jackson. Taysom Hill gets to play the New York Jets. Alvin Kamara is back, allegedly. Uh, Taysom Hill does have the mallet finger, the the finger <laughs> injury. That, that one does not sound good. No, it does not. That now, sounds like something you got with, what's the other, when you eat a bunch of meat, the gout. Like the gout and mallet Wait, finger see, are I, in the I, same. I, meat gives you gout? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Really? Yeah, yeah. too much red meat. Well, that's, that's I mean, that's not ha just how you get gout, but that's that's now, common. gout is not like, all, all I can think of for gout is, I think there was a commercial at one point where someone was carrying around a giant uh, beaker full of like this green fluid, and that was how they represented gout in the commercial mm. like we don't want to have this well it, it affects the metabolism of uric acid and so it causes well, causes arthritis in the smaller bones of the feet and so too much yeah, I got uric... a bad case of the gout <laughs> yeah so i'm just saying mallet finger mm -hmm. and gout seem in the same category of descriptor where you might treat both with leeches that's all i'm saying <laughs> we need to get some blood out uh, I am playing Lamar Jackson over Taysom Hill. Lamar Jackson is taking on the Cleveland Browns. When things go bad for Lamar, you're the quarterback 10, 11, maybe you're 15, 16. When things go bad for Taysom, he's benched, he's broken. We've never seen it go bad for yeah, him. As though. a starter, he's never been outside the top 12 yet. And the Jets, mm, it's gonna now, that, now let me paint a picture. Yeah, Alvin I mean, you're Kamara's making compelling arguments. I just worried about the mallet. <laughs> I mean, unless Lamar's got gout, I think I'm still going Lamar. <laughs> Alvin Kamara could have two or three rushing touchdowns against the Jets, and then all uh -huh. of a sudden, Taysom Hill is is very, very low. I if he if you're he's not scared of the mallet, full, I'm not. He played with it mid game. You know, obviously, we we have seen injuries when they swell up later. Maybe they get more severe. Both but guys like throwing interceptions. That's if he's for sure. practicing in full all week. You might be right. I think I lean. He feels safe. He feels safe against the Jets, huh? Yes. Shoot. The ru the rushing baseline feels much safer. Uh, I don't I don't think he had a rushing touchdown last week, did he? I don't remember. I he, he had he, like, over a hundred yards. He saved his fantasy day with the huge garbage time touchdown to Harris. They might be treating him with leeches too, so he might recover <laughs> quickly. You guys are right. This this is a brutal question. on the road in Cleveland after Cleveland's. Yeah, I oh, think man. I mean, Cleveland is just on by, right? Yes. So, important game, well-coached team, at home, slow off. And I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think okay. it, I'm with you if you are indeed endorsing Taysom Hill. <laughs> I am barely endorsing Taysom Hill, yes. I'm just dancing until we get to the next question. YouTube question from Tucker. What are your guys' records in the League of Record? <laughs> Not oh, great, no. Tucker. Brooks, what are you doing? Um, I haven't heard much about it this year. Any playoff berths among the three of you? Is Al in a position to destroy you? Uh, look, I'll, g I'll give you the good news. I'll leave the bad to my friends. Uh, I am, I'm am nine in four. Al is... That's correct. Al is a game better than me. We just had a head-to-head. -head. He beat me by five points. He's got the bye week. Uh, I think seven points separates us in total points on the year. We have had a fun rivalry, which we've never really had. Due to you not being good in the past. I plead the fifth, <laughs> I guess, but I, I'm focused on this year. It's right. going well. It is going well. You're you're doing well. Uh, Jason. It is funny to think like uh, I, I really love that you're doing well, Jeremy. Um, very, very proud of you this year. It's just like you're like my little boy that I'm like, he can uh, he can do it. I'm so impressed. Um no, my so my, I got off to a terrible start. There's a keeper league, and in this league, you sell to build for right. the next year, and the and the teams that are in it buy. So I'm I'm at four or five wins right now. And not I, not great. I do have some audio from Mike's team. <laughs> <laughs> and then this past week. <laughs> That audio is, in fact, too kind. It is a little too to, kind. To uh, what has happened to my team. The the 
This will be a That's leg- what I was looking yes. for. Thank you. And uh, it runs for week after week. The legend of my bad luck for this fantasy football season will go down historically. Uh, but let me tell you, I'm very excited for 2022. <laughs> hey, uh, I, if there, if you ever want to know if we can um, sympathize with your bad season out there, listener, Mike can sympathize this year. He's had it oh, rough, yeah. and he's had it. Like I, I think I said this in the studio the other day. Like Mike has earned immense respect for me this year because he has done what we say to do on this show, which is regardless of record, he has fought tooth and nail for victory. He's had horrible breaks. In fact, this past week, again, it was like one point. And yet he traded for Deontay at the trade deadline to win more games. He's 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 like stayed hungry, which has caused him more physical pain. Yes. Without question. Mm-hmm. Yes. If he he should have just mentally <laughs> checked out. Given up. <laughs> moved on. So Be- like people have asked, you know, like what's the best part of the job? What's the worst part of the job? And if you know never really had a uh, the answer for the worst part of doing this podcast. The worst part, though, I figured it out, is when you're out, if, if your job is not fantasy football, you have a bad weekend, Monday or Tuesday, you can like walk away. You can get your break. But instead, we come directly in at, from Monday Night Football and have to talk about what just happened. Mm. And, uh, Legit, maybe, maybe it's good for you. Le- legitimately, I think I've had like five Monday night football just full disasters that have caused me to lose by two points, and I can't leave. I'm st- but, so we're I'm here for you people because I am a shell of a man on the inside, it or on 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 the outside. There's all a, sides. Like what, Jason? The what was your quote after the Philip Rivers? You talked about like you were just a a, sh- uh, a shell of a man. I think what, it was an M&M with, with, with no chocolate inside or something. <laughs> it was like an M M&M. and M. Yeah, but that yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's, that's me. Mike. All right, three very concerned Terry McLaurin managers on Instagram. Oh gosh, uh, Dugan says, should I continue starting Terry McLaurin? Forty Jordy says, scary Terry auto start. And Menno Maniac says, Terry McLaurin, a lot of dots. What do I do? Well, ah! Terry, I would say, fits the mold of draft bust or disappointment at a minimum. Maybe not full bust. Maybe full bust. I would say that, uh, you know, he's 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 an auto start for me still. Yes, he is for me. As but well. he's more, you know, he's certainly wide receiver two flex category and they're they're. You have to have an expectation that this is not like the days of Allen Robinson where you got a bunch of consistency. This is more, you know, what, four times he's been inside the top seven, so he wins you weeks or comes close to it. And then he's been bad in the Mm -hmm. other games, and it's not going to be an easy one this week against Dallas, to be honest. So maybe that does take him out of auto-start category. Yeah, at this point, you may have players who are better. I still think that he is a... If I have him, I'm starting him because I know what he can do. But the lack of hyper targeting is it's, it's a, a little annoying. But oh, he, like, he he tried a couple times yeah, last yeah, week yeah. in some of the ugliest throws I've seen from a professional quarterback. Yeah, but now remembering, you know, because like over the first eight games of the season, you had you had four games where he was above ten targets. But this is a product of of Washington winning. This because this is the football team, uh, like their strategy the last month has been give Antonio the Gibbs uh, the Gibson, <laughs> oh, give him the Gibson, <laughs> give Antonio Gibson as many carries. I hope that's the play call in the huddle. <laughs> the, we're going with the Gibson on this one. Here we go with the Gibby again. Uh, he, he's been what like thirty plus opportunities week after week after week, and it's been working for them so that's what they're riding yeah i mean i i don't view terry mclaurin as an auto start he's certainly a start worthy player but like for instance let me give you a couple names would you start terry mclaurin or t higgins i would probably i'd probably chase higgins right now 
I, I, w I would as well. What yeah. about Mike Williams, a very Terry McLaurin-esque player, big booms, a lot of busts. Who uh, would you go after that this one's... week? Uh, Mike Williams against the Giants, Keenan Allen. Yeah, Keenan Allen is probably out, which we did. The, the update for Keenan Allen, if you had not heard, we did the – Status it was revealed he is a vaccinated player so that his he has to have the 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 double negatives twenty four hours apart but that also means that he tested positive so he he wasn't just a close contact making it pretty unlikely that he plays the, this upcoming weekend and so for that particular case I would take Mike Williams all right final one because he's in the same game Amari Cooper. Or Terry McLaurin. Oh my gosh, um, Terry. Hmm. I think I, <laughs> I think I lean the opposite of Terry for all of those. So that's where I say he is someone you just need to take a look at. Sure. Don't don't plug him in your lineup without considering other options. But he is not a bad play. Uh, he will have more big boom games. Nothing on the field has looked bad as a as a talent as a player. I do think he was overhyped. Sure, I mean, I had the that hype opinion came with a different quarterback it too, did. though. It did, but it, it also came with the reality that, like, and obviously players make the jump, right? But Terry McLaurin had been, I mean, he's he's pretty much doing, I mean, the end of the year number is going to look like last year. He's yeah. going to be the same. He's going to be 21, 22, somewhere in that range. Yeah, I was far more excited for Terry McLaurin when Ryan Fitzpatrick and was that's the quarterback. Fair. And that's fair, and you never know. You don't know, you can't prove what would have happened there, and and um, it, there were still going to be expectations that the defense was going to be good. Sure. And if and, and this will be something to track for years to come. Do they throw the ball enough philosophically as a team when they're competitive? Because they might be a team that this defense should be good enough to keep them in games and make in, uh, Gibson a centerpiece. All right. We have Nicholas Potiff says, who is a better start, Kareem Hunt or Tony Pollard? Ooh, I'm going to go with Kareem Hunt. Um, Tony Pollard has been the better start over the last little bit. Obviously, Hunt has been injured, and Pollard has been a top 24 running back recently. But again, it's been extremely efficient. The touch is the volume. I, I think coming off of the bye, um, Kareem Hunt should be healthy. And if you don't remember, before the injury, Kareem Hunt was a dominant force. I mean, he was also top 24 every week, but he was putting up number two, number eight uh, finishes on the week. Uh, I, you know, Baltimore isn't the best matchup, but it's not one that I would. Baltimore over the avoid. last month has been atrocious for fantasy running backs, like as in they're shutting them down. Who have they? Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Chicago, and Miami. But that was Cleveland without. I Hunt. think that was Kareem's first game back. Regardless, I'm taking Pollard. Okay. I, I find myself in the Pollard camp this week. I think the team, just the an amount of media discussions around Zeke and what Pollard's been able to do and the big play and what Aikman coming out and talking about it, they have to give the ball to Tony Pollard. And so with both of them being the number two on their teams, I'm going to go that side. Yeah, I think I play Pollard as well. All right, uh, what about Kareem Hunt or Darnell Mooney? Flex question here from Instagram. All right, so Darnell Mooney is I was taking on the Green Bay Packers. Correct, in Green Bay. Um, I was the anti-Mooney guy this last week, and I am not. You were pants on. I was. Uh, yeah, I was pants on. Now I'm pants off. I think Mooney is a very good play. <laughs> um, uh, let me ask you a second Mooney question then because I heard it this morning. Mooney or Higgins? Oh, man, that's tough. Because Higgins, Higgins is been, kind of on fire. Mooney was on fire. Um, fire versus fire. Goodness. I think I lean with the quarterback there. I, I'm going to take I'm gonna take Higgins. Uh, I like both. Um, but, yeah, I would, I would take Mooney over, over Hunt. All right. Uh, let's go to the uh, uh, rest of the season question from Jack Wavra on Instagram because it's brutal. Elijah Moore or Hollywood Brown rest of season? Hmm. I feel... So, Elijah Moore, uh, we have four of the last five games. He has been sensational. Uh, top 24 guy, top 10 in three of those five games. Gets to play the Saints this week. I would... Uh, he's my answer. 
Is Elijah Moore? Yeah, pretty pretty confidently actually. I mean the the air yards are there. The the targets the, are there. The targets 12, are there. Eight, eleven. He gets well, the twelve, thirteen, ten, seven for for Hollywood. They 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 both. Why not both? <laughs> because that's not the question. Uh, he Elijah Moore gets the Saints this week. How confident are we in Zach Wilson in this matchup? Because the the Saints, like against fantasy quarterbacks and fantasy wide receivers, it has become a matchup that we are targeting. But Zach Wilson, he finally had a good game. I I, I understand that, but just on on the season, it's been pretty poor. Yeah, I mean he he, he was a side eye stream this week. I mean the, okay. you wouldn't admit it to people. You certainly wouldn't say it here on the show, but if you did it in secret, you might get away with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not um I'm not afraid of Zach Wilson as my starter against this current version of the Saints that have not been able to slow or stop. So you would take more this week over Hollywood? I would, and when I look at the schedule, I, I really like both players. This is uh, rest of the season, this week I, I like both, but I lean towards Elijah Moore because of the schedule. The the Saints, he's got Jacksonville uh, and the Buccaneers along the way, whereas Hollywood has pretty much difficult matchups every week. Hollywood's down at 17 on the year now. Elijah's at 29 coming on later. They could end up close depending on the way things trend. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Thursday night breakdown. Thursday night breakdown. The six, five and one Pittsburgh Steelers go to Minnesota taking on the five and seven Minnesota Vikings. The DraftKings Sportsbook line. Minnesota minus three. I thought I saw minus two and a half earlier. That might have been how they opened the week. Ooh. Now they're uh, more heavily favored. The over-under is 43 points here. I I am looking forward to this game. I do think Minnesota wins it. Uh, they are a ping-pong kind of team, and I think they're going to be able to get it done, but it is going to be a close one. Yeah, so if, if we know anything, we know the game will be close. Yes. Because Minnesota, they seem to match their level of play to their opponents. If they love anything, it's drama. I mean, <laughs> Vikings fans. Overtimes, you, kickers. It's not always a, the ending that you want. But goodness, do you guys get a lot of crazy stuff happening. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Tell me if you're surprised, Andy. Maybe this is... I don't know, Adam Thielen, is he moving the – I'm a little surprised it's only 43 points. I would expect more points to be scored. I would take the over in this game on prime time in a dome in Minnesota. Big Ben's looked a little bit better. I don't. How do you feel about just – do you think this is a defensive battle or just an average mediocre game, or is there a chance for offensive – I like the line. Output. Yeah, I don't – I like the line. I mean, they, both teams have explosive players, so I think there's always that opportunity – Minnesota struggled in the secondary. Pittsburgh, I mean, they've been a disaster against running backs recently. The second most uh, points given up to running backs over since their bye week. So, you know, Alexander Madison, he seizes the opportunity. They need him. They're going to need him even more without Thielen. So I think certain players in this in this game are very attractive on both sides. We've talked about K.J. Osborne and, and Tyler Conklin filling the void, the target void in some regard for Minnesota. So I think both those guys are in play. Jefferson, of course. Um, and then Kirk Cousins, quietly the quarterback eight on the year, I, you know, at home. Do you have confidence without Adam Thielen to plug him in? And let me just remind you, prime time. Sure. Kirk Cousins. I'm not going to pivot from Cousins down a tier based on matchup. What about based on prime time? <laughs> if you want to. I mean, I'm not playing Zach Wilson yeah, over him. The, the streamers are not strong this week. So, I mean, you would be like Kirk Cousins or or Joe Burrow against San Francisco. Kirk Cousins or Tannehill against Jacksonville. I mean, it's – I'm with Andy. I would stick with Kirk Cousins. All right. Um, K.J. Osborne or Russell Gage, who we talked about recently. Ooh. Russell Gage has been on fire, uh, but I think you you can say pretty confidently that K.J. Osborne will be the one who 
steps into the uh, into the, the wide receiver two role, I would roll. Oh gosh, it is really close. That I, is a very close question. Uh, both of the uh, when I look at it, I think that the both guys' floor is very very low. I mean, we know Russell Gage's floor is zero. He's done it twice recently. Uh, KJ Osborne will probably have three points. Uh, their ceilings are probably somewhat similar. Uh, I, KJ Osborne has shown a little bit more juice on the field to me. Mm -hmm. So for those reasons, when it's that close, I'm going to go with the Thursday night player. I'm going to get it. You know, if I've got to start one of those guys, let me know how they're going to do early in the week. Let me uh, plug them, not in my flex position, but put them in at wide receiver and make my adjustments as the week go on. Okay. What about KJ Osborne or Jamison Crowder? <laughs> I, I like if it's a full PPR, I'm going to I'm going to go Crowder because I think he's going to be peppered in that matchup with a bunch of targets. What he does with them is probably not enough. All right. Um, what about the other side of the ball? What are your big question marks for you? Obviously, Deontay and Najee are locks in this game. How are you feeling about the Muth? I I think you're still feeling good about the Muth. This the, at at tight end, you're not going to have someone who just every single week is great. Um, it doesn't matter who you, Darren Waller is not has not been great every single week. He has been involved enough uh, around the end zone to where I think you are confident in him. Now, if I'm looking in this game, Pat Fryermuth versus Tyler Conklin. That's very interesting to me because I think the floor is higher with Conklin. I expect more targets, more opportunity, um, higher probability of a touchdown to Pat Fryermuth. But when I'm looking at that decision, that means I I probably lean Conklin. Yeah, with Adam Thielen leaving that game early, that turned into nine targets for Tyler Conklin. Conk conk baby, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> Uh, it's been a it's been a bad year for Chase Claypool. Even in in yeah. weeks and matchups where you expect a lot from him, he hasn't delivered. He's got one week inside the top twelve this year, and then only one other game inside the top twenty four. They both came early in the year. In fact, the last five weeks, or sorry, six weeks he's played, he's on pace for nine hundred yards, no touchdowns, yeah, fifty three receptions. It all comes. It it's the touchdowns. Of one on the season, like the. His his rookie year was sensational. It, he was in like truly elite company of rookie wide receivers who hit that double digit touchdown mark. It's it's a very rare thing. So for him to drop all the way to one receiving touchdown on the year, it is is really mind boggling. It actually reminds me a lot of what happened when, if you recall, the second season for Mike Williams, he scored sure. ten touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Immediately following, there was a lot of hype and expectation, and he scored like, two times. Oh, two. two! Wow. Yeah, no, that's a really good. Comp. And, but he had and, the he had the yardage that year, right? I think a thousand yards, yeah. maybe that year. Um, no, that's that's a good comp. That being said, I'm happy to play Chase Claypool this week. I I, I listened to everything you said. It has not been good. He's pretty much been a bust on the season. The previous two games, though. You're talking about 93 yards, 82 yards. He has not been a disappearing act. He hasn't been a top 12, top 24, but he's giving you about 10 points those weeks. And this is the best matchup you can hope for against Minnesota. So right. I am willing to play him. He's not a must start, but certainly a guy that I, I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, he had a bad week. I have to bench Chase, Chase Claypool, Claypool or Terry McLaurin. I would go Terry McLaurin there. Okay. He's the one. For his team. A reminder to take the Thursday night players out of your flex position, uh, especially at a week like this. If you're if you're making a lot of other decisions, waiting on injuries, things like that, get them into their main positions so that you have flexibility heading into the weekend. That'll do it for today's show. Starts of the week, the matchups, Jason's boom boom kicker, and a whole lot more coming on tomorrow's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you join us tonight on Green Room a.k.a. the Fantasy Footballers Party Room. It's a good time. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And Foot Clan, we want to thank DraftKings for supporting the show. It's been an exciting NFL season as we enter Week 14. New customers at DraftKings can get a free shot at $1 million, a top prize 
with their first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. Download the DraftKings app now and use the code BALLERS this week. Like I said, new customers get a free shot at $1 million. They get to compete for millions in prizes across all contests. Enter the code BALLERS to get a free shot at $1 million with your first deposit. That's the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details.